I Got the Hell Out does contain explicit content that might not be suitable for some listeners, such as children, those that easily get offended, and we do recommend that listeners at work put your earbuds in if you have co-workers around. And if you like the show, please spread the word by telling as many people as you can. We'd also appreciate if you would subscribe, rate, hopefully with five stars, and review the podcast on iTunes. You can find us there as well as on Stitcher and Overcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Was In A Cult, on Facebook at I Got The Hell Out, and on Instagram at I Got The Hell Out with an underscore after each word. You can contact us through our website at IGotTheHellOut.com. Hi guys, it's Deb. And this is Laura. And it's another wonderful episode of I I Got got The Hell Out. Out. And this should be a really good episode. I mean, we're just cracking on each other already, and we ain't even started yet, you know? I know, I know. And it's what? Episode 36. 36. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I know, and I've been up since way early, and I get to go to work tonight. And you know what today is? The new Doctor Who. <gasps> but I haven't watched it since the 8th episode. But it doesn't, epi- it doesn't matter. Season. It doesn't matter. It's the woman Doctor Who. Well, okay, here we go. Gloat again. You get something, and I don't. You got fifty bucks for me on a bet. Yeah, but I don't. I don't have cable or satellite. Well, then I have it on DVR, so you have to watch it here. Yeah, at some point. I, I don't have an hour to spend here watching Doctor Who. I wish I did, but oh man, life, life is like a lightning pace at this point. Oh well, I'm I'll sorry. let you know how it is. Can't you like record <laughs> it on something for me, like a like a disc or something? How would I do that? I don't know. I don't do technology. Like, they don't do that anymore. Like, if, if it was 20 years ago, I would be able to do a VHS for you. Uh, I still have a VHS player. Well, I don't have... <gasps> and guess what I found? What? See, all these years I've known you, and you have never freaking come to my house, okay? Okay. I found the VHS tapes of uh, when different, like, Nancy Grace interviewed. <gasps> and um, I think no. and I think I even have one of the ones. Remember I mentioned I would love to have the one that my son's sitting on my lap praising You're his raising, hands. Raising, like, praise the Lord yep, or whatever. Yep, yep, I have three tapes, Laura. Is that enticing enough to oh, come to my house? Oh, I would have to come over. Because... <gasps> I, when my grandpa died, my grandma gave me his TV and it must weigh a hundred freaking pounds. Oh, like the old ones. Yeah. And it's huge, but it has the, um, VCR and a DVD player built in. Oh, nice. And I have one of those upstairs, same exact one in my youngest son's room. Okay. And I actually dropped that one trying to get it up where it is and I dented my, I dented my Pergo floor. Yeah, there's a big divot in the Pergo. Yeah. are heavy. Do you think we could play clips like some audio clips? I wonder. I don't know. Isn't that stuff usually copyrighted? Oh, shit. I don't know. We'll have to think about it. Oh, okay. Because many, I don't know, powers that be, are they really listening? I don't know. Um, but back to the Nancy Grace interview, um, I I talked with an, an elder's wife that Nancy Grace actually contacted her. And okay. Um, wanted her like to do a phone in her thing, you know, uh-huh. and, um, a lot of people are still really scared to speak or speak out against right. them. And, um, she told them that she had to think about it and all of her kids were like, no, don't do it. No, don't, oh, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. So how long ago was this? I have no idea. Well, Nancy Grace interview, that was like early I guess mid mid two thousands, maybe six, okay. seven, eight. Okay. I don't I don't rightly remember. All I know is my mom taped it for me. Hi mom. Oh, I need to watch that. But you have to come to my I house. I will. No, you won't. <laughs> for a Nancy Grace video, I will. Really? For a Nancy Grace video. You don't have a VCR, do you? I don't. <sighs> I wonder if you can even buy them anymore. I don't know if you can't. Yeah, I'm sure somewhere they have them for like twenty bucks maybe. I don't think I've even seen them in a resale shop. Maybe a yard sale. Right. So. Wow, we are way off topic. I know. I feel like I have to sneeze. But um, uh, the Kool-Aid recipe. Yes, go is, ahead. Is brought to us today by Brother Bob. Oh. Yes. And what does he have to say about it? Um, He calls it. He called it the pass out punch. But I, <laughs> I figured we're talking about Passover. So we got the pass out over <laughs> punch. It's a pass out over yeah, the Passover pass out punch. Okay. Okay. Which is that is fruit punch flavored Kool-Aid. Okay. Okay. 
and grain alcohol. Oh, geez. Which which he says that he they don't sell grain alcohol in PA anymore. Apparently, too many. Gee, wonder why. Apparently, too many people have gone blind from from drinking grain alcohol. As a pharmacist, what does grain alcohol do to you? It just messes you up, man. It is like straight alcohol. I, did, it, from my teen years, yes. There was many of us, many a night, that were dying from alcohol poisoning, poisoning. out in a field somewhere when right. all our parents thought we were sleeping over Because that's house. what was poured into the punch bowl. Well, yeah, grain alcohol. I mean, that stuff messes you up. It was cheap. And, and it just does wonders for the liver. Anyway, you're supposed to use uh, corn syrup instead of sugar when you make the, the fruit Ooh, punch. Oh, I wonder why. Well, because Brother Bob, he gives a money-back guarantee that you will not get a hangover if you use corn syrup instead of sugar. I find that hard to believe. I, it's Brother Bob's money-back guarantee. Um, now, if you have trouble finding grain alcohol, shitloads of vodka would probably be an acceptable substitute. Right. Um, and you're supposed to put chopped fruit in there and, um, a nifty side effect of not only do you not get a hangover, but we're getting really seriously shit faced. So you get some tiny new demons. <laughs> <laughs> Where are your demon bells? <clears throat> well, we figured that cancels them out. So the demons are going to get you because you're drunk. Right. Yeah. You wear your demon bells and you're good. No, because you're getting drunk. So it, they, they cancel each other out. We already discussed this. All come right. on, come on. Anyway, what do you have? Um, Carrie L. Um, she posted some questions for us, and I find it easier to answer this way sometimes than. Oh, this is from Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she said um, she's been listening to us for about a month, and she just loves us because we crack her up. <laughs> um. She asks, question number one, does the head dumbass live on the compound <laughs> or does he live somewhere else? In one article I read, it said that he is worth over a million dollars. So I'm betting that he doesn't live in a dinky ass little trailer. Um, Carrie, no, he does not live in a dinky ass little trailer. He actually, from the last count that I knew of, he has five, six houses. He has one. Um, there's a lake out there. And it's a pretty big lake, and he bought a lake house out there for I don't know how much. Um, well, other people are living in squalor. Yes, yes. Perfect. And I spoke to somebody who just left, and um, do you remember how I told you, I don't even remember what episode it was, that his boy children are going to a special school so that they can take over and right. be the rulers, the hierarchy, blah, blah, blah. Um, somebody who left there told me that the rest of his children live like in these rundown, falling apart trailers. You mean the ones that aren't in line to do whatever? I guess. And the, okay. in the girl and children. The girls. Well, because they're worthless, right? Well, until it's time to marry them off. Then you sell them. Oh, God. So, yeah, yeah. Well, you know who this reminds me of is that piece of shit. What's his name? Joel Olstein. Yeah, you, you used his last name. We do not give people glory by using their last name. Well, you know, okay, Joel, whatever. Joel O. Joel O. Doesn't he look gay? I swear to God, he—he he not like, not that there's anything wrong with being no, gay. He but... looks—he looks like he's had some really bad plastic surgery. Yeah, looks like. he looks really freaky. And the fact that he—I read somewhere that he's worth like forty million. Of course. And I'm like, okay, well, if he's worth forty million, all of his money's not going to help the poor. No, did you ever see like a flyover of his mansion and what he owns? He has his own plane. Yeah, he has his own plane. Because God says he's good enough to have one. But yet people still contribute money and think that it's going to help, to help the poor. Um, oh. the last the last flood. I don't remember where he's based out of. Oh yeah, he shut the doors. He he didn't want people in. Right. Yeah. Right. The man yep. of God yep. won't will not open. I mean, his place is bigger than the stadium that they have for concerts and yep. things. I remember that. And he locked everybody out. And uh, man of God. Because that, that's what God would do. That's what God would do. That, that's what Jesus would do. He'd lock that door. Meanwhile, a friend of mine who lives in Houston uh, was posting news articles. I think it was Mattress King or something. Okay. 
And that dude, he, the, the Mattress King guy, he, he opened his yes. doors and let people stay at his store. It, it was just a giant warehouse. His store yep. is nothing but a giant warehouse. And um, he let all of these people it in. It looked like it was kind of like an Ikea, how like little bedroom sets are right. set up. Right. So he let people stay in the bedrooms. That and he kept, you know, stock in the back. Yep. So he was dragging mattresses out and laying them down yep. wherever. And then not only that, he turned around and gave whoever slept on those mattresses, he gave them to them. Right. Yep. And that man, his business tripled. As well it should. When news well got out of what right. he did. Right. And, and hats off to you, dude. Hmm. Who's the more godly one? Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. You know. Freaky freaky plastic surgery gone wrong guy or uh he's just he's freaky looking my, why are you looking at me like that because my skin is singing i've had too much Your coffee skin this is singing. <laughs> <clears throat> we've moved on to milk but still i'm sitting here and yeah all right haven't you ever had that much coffee no oh man you should try it sometime your skin feels like it's doing its own thing no, I've, I only do one cup of coffee a day. Oh, you have no idea. what that, That's like drinking one beer. What's the point? I don't know. Seriously, I mean, anyway. Uh, Continue. Carrie, he doesn't live in no dinky ass little trailer, but I have heard that his health is failing Aww. and that he hasn't been off of the actual compound in months. Mm. It, no one has reported seeing him leave or anything. Now, do you think they would do some kind of, say he dies, do you think they'd do some cover up for a while? Or do you think they'd let people know? We've right all, away, we or? have all theorized on this. And um, my ex pedophile father in law, um, he actually really looks like the dude. And from little like little man mm -hmm. and they've actually used him as a body double oh get out so that you know there's certain areas that the congregation's not allowed to go like even on the grounds you okay. can only get within so far of little man's the door to his office because there's security everywhere you know and it, you just can't get past them there's no reason for you to be back there okay but if you're, you can still see the, you're like maybe 50 feet away, 100 feet, okay. you know? And if my ex-father-in-law would duck out of the building real quick, he could be really easily mistaken for a little man himself. Oh, wow. So, but um, I, I've also heard, you know, karma's been doing a little bit on him. Um, on he, who, little man or your ex? On 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 the ex father in law. Oh, really? Now, um, apparently he's a diabetic, and um, now is he allowed to have insulin? Well, let's just say he only has one leg now, <laughs> and, and, and and you know it's really not I funny. Don't mean to laugh. I don't mean to laugh, but I mean karma really needs to bite these people in the ass. <sighs> it's working on it. I mean. It, it, it's the karma cafe. There's no menu. You, you you get what what's served to you. And sometimes it takes a long time for karma to catch up. You know what I mean? It I, always does, though. Okay. Um, Carrie had a second question. Okay. What, in your honest opinion, do you think will finally bring little man down? It seems like there is so much against him, but nothing sticks. What do you think will make authorities finally say enough? Ooh. Um. Carrie, we've we've all been wondering that for years upon years upon years upon years. And I I, I can't even begin to answer that one for you. So um don't know. I mean we I mean because the information's all out there. I so right? you know I, what I mean? Laura, we have talked about this and I can't say it. I mean, everybody use your brain. Okay, and you'll know why it's still going on. Okay, yeah, right. Seriously, right. Um, yeah, that was Carrie and her questions. And oh, by the way, did you really like dinner last week when I brought it to you? Yeah, why? It was deer meat. It was good. Oh, I didn't know. Some people don't eat deer. I don't care. It was oh, good. okay. Well, I you just looked so tired and you were scarfing it up and I wanted to so badly tell you last week that it, it was deer roast and you got the backstrap, you got the tenderloin, I gave you the best part of the deer for dinner. 
Alrighty. Yeah. And I didn't want to, I so badly wanted to tell you last week, but I didn't want you to like get this look of horror, jump up and go vomit in the, in the toilet. So, so I'll vomit right now. No, no you wouldn't do it now. <laughs> no, I actually, no, it was good. yeah, I fed it. I started to feed it to another friend of mine and she was seeming to like it. And then I told her it was deer and like, she got this look of horror on her face and actually like gagged and threw up a bit and wouldn't eat any more of it. And it's like, it's meat. Oh Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I just anyway, I don't know. I don't. Is know. that the same as venison? Yeah, Is that that's that's the same thing. It's venison deer. is deer, right? Okay. You are correct. Okay, we're gonna go backwards here. What, and another question. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, another ex member. Hi, Gary. Um, he's the one that you know asked to get in last week. Like, I'm the first person that met you. Seriously. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> His question is, hi, Deb, I was just curious, why do you say, and it's in quotes, God all the time on the podcast? Even when Laura is reading from one of the propaganda books, she always says God instead of the name we used to use at the cult. Right. Um, he says, I have a hard time believing it's because it's too holy to be said out loud. And um, he was just wondering if there was a reason. And yeah, Gary, there's a reason. Um First of all, we started this really generically because we didn't want to be found. Okay. We didn't even say we were in Pittsburgh. No, we, we didn't mean, even. We were just kind of there. Yeah. Um, if you go back to the very beginning, we are so vague. It is not even. Anyway, um, I, I, it, number one, I didn't want them to be able to find me until enough people were listening and enough people knew that I wouldn't disappear or, or get hurt or killed. Do you know what I right. mean? Uh, I also do not want them to be able to sue me because I never say anything. Right. You know, I, <laughs> you're talking about a cult. I, I'm talking about a cult. And if, you know, they want to try and sue me by the information that's there, I think I'm going to have a jury trial. And if you're that horrible of a cult, maybe you should give us ex members some money. Come on, bring it on, right. bring it on. So yeah, Gary, that was your question. Um, Okay, now, remember we were talking about Mormon marriage? Yes. Okay, we have um, Amber, Amber K. I was supposed to give her a shout out last week and I felt so badly because like, you I didn't. didn't. And, you know, because it's always a shit show here. Right. So, um, Amber K, this is a long one. Um, she says it was an excellent shit show as always. <laughs> um, no worries about that. <laughs> it made my week just as it always does. And she says, you asked about Mormon marriage ceremonies and who can attend. Oh, that's right. That's you specifically right. asked ex-Mormons, but as a happy current Mormon, well, if she's a happy one, then if she's in the cult, she's pagan because she's happy. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, she's a happy current Mormon, but she still feels like she's qualified to answer the question. Okay. So, so and anybody out there, if you're happy with your religion, you know. Go for it. Go for it. So don't, don't let me or anything I say offend you you know what i mean everyone's in their own place doing what they do that works for them okay she says ideally mormons are married in the temple which is different from a regular church everyone and anyone is welcome at the regular mormon church whether it be for sunday services classes weekday classes for youth activity nights or even if the bishop knows you well enough and trusts you to lock up properly when you're done <laughs> There's my favorite, wheelchair <laughs> basketball and wheelie practice alone in the gym with the entire building to yourself, wearing a helmet in case the wheelie tips a little too far backwards, leading to a crash landing. I don't know what's wrong with her, Laura, but her profile picture, she looks like she's in a full body cast. Oh my God. Um, yeah, I'll show it to you when I'm done. Um, yeah, she... she uh, she loves that there's no one around to witness the event, so no mortification and even the pure joy of being able to privately laugh at oneself. So, yeah, your situation could be anything in life, Laura. Right. And as long as you're able to laugh about it or turn it around somehow in your head, it's all good. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Anyway, she goes on to say, um, in order to attend the temple for any ceremony, including the marriage sealing of a couple for time and all eternity, one must be a member, uh, a Mormon in good standing with a valid temple recommended. It's a it's a card signed by an evil higher up than a bishop. 
Okay? Oh. It, it's a big cheese known as the steak president. Ooh, she's letting out a bunch of stuff. Are, are you going to get in trouble, girl? I don't think so. So it's kind of like an invite, like, like you have to hand in your invitation. Well, get in there. I'm thinking that, yeah, you, you have to be like a, just like the Scientology people. They just don't let anybody in during certain things. Right. So you can go to the church. But you, if you, if you get into the temple, you got to show that. You got to show a special card. Right. A special okay. card that says, and she has such a special of a card that she has a key so she can go and do wheelie stuff. Isn't that so cool? That is very cool. Yeah. We should go up to the hospital sometime and wheelchair race. Or would that be disrespectful? That's very disrespectful. But it's funny when it's like on a sitcom, isn't it? I don't know. I, it's, everything is so politically correct these days. Amber, let us know. Please, please, please. Is, is it politically correct or not correct? I, um, <laughs> oh my God, move on. Anyway, this is a big whole long thing and blah, 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 blah. Somebody else answered also, but I couldn't find that one. And as always... What about, oh, about the marriage and right. being allowed in? Um, and I, sorry, sweetheart, I don't remember your name, but um, it was something similar to this, but she was not allowed to attend her best friend's wedding. Oh, man. Because, well, maybe it's in here. Hold this. What, because she wasn't in good standing or she wasn't? Yeah, she wasn't in good standing, something like that. Um, da, 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 Did da, you find da, it? No, I was looking at other stuff. I was looking at other stuff. Oh, um, to Brooke S., who gave us this funny hell cartoon that I cannot post. Oh, I never even saw that. Yeah. Oh, that's um, I'm sorry, Brooke. I can't because it has the, the, the name, name of the state basically right. in it. So I have to but delete that. But that is that. a good one, though. It was a really good one. And Lucy D., I'm not sure where she lives, but um, she wanted to know what the hell is a pierogi. So what? Oh my God, girl! When I How moved sacrilegious. When I moved away from Pittsburgh, okay, nobody knew I, what a pierogi was. I just thought that was Mrs. T's frozen box, and you can either get with the cheddar or without the cheddar. But but aren't those sold everywhere, like around the country? Mrs. T's only frozen in two flavors: plain and with cheese. But it says pierogi on it. Yeah, but it's in the frozen section, and if you don't know what they are, you just kind of skim right over them. Oh, they are a gloriousness dough with potatoes and cheese. Yeah, it's like a noodle dough, and you you make a circle, and you put mashed potatoes and cheese and or whatever you want to fill it with. I right. mean, some people fill them with it's sauerkraut kind of like, and, and it's sausage. It's folded over, sort of like a calzone. Kind yeah, and it's, it's like crimped. it's a very mini, like a mini calzone. Who is cutting the grass outside? Can I don't know, that? but we're gonna have to kill them. Holy crap. Well, as always, it's a shit show, and I have to go to work, so it's not even like we can wait till they're done no, cutting the grass. No, no, We got pit barking and... Grass cutting. Oh, well, carry on. <laughs> so anyway, pierogies, absolute deliciousness. But when I moved, you couldn't find... Nobody knew what they were. And that I lived... That is unbelievable. I lived with these rednecks in South Carolina, okay? And when I say rednecks, they, they kept their... They kept all of their... Plates, forks, cups, cookware in the refrigerator. They kept no food Why? in the house. Because of the roaches were so bad. Oh, yuck. Okay, there was a girl that lived there, and her name was Becky, and she was probably maybe 20, 21 tops. Uh-huh. Um, and she had two beautiful little girls, okay? She had one to each brother, but wasn't dating either brother. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. And the older brother, um, his current girlfriend was living with him there. They had a baby, and he had like eight other assorted children around um, the county. Floating around. Yeah. Um, the guy who owned the house, his his best friend, lived in this teeny tiny little travel trailer, and he ended all he did all day was drink beer. And they ended up taking him away because he had gangrene in both his legs. Ooh. Yeah, he went to a nursing home. So these were like Aww. really redneck people. Why am I telling you this? Why? Well, I have no idea. God, we are oh, off on so many tangents today. Because I couldn't find pierogies. And I was wanted pierogies so bad. And I had, and here, you just, I mean, pierogies plus. Just, hello, I hello, want a dozen. Pierogi festival at Kennywood. Screw you, you didn't take me. You, we talked about this before we hit the record button. You wouldn't have liked it anyway. I would have found something I liked. They were all funky flavors. Shh, you would have... shh, shh, shh. So I would make 12 dozen <laughs> pierogies. Shush me. It worked. <laughs> no, just... 
I would make 12 dozen. I would take all day to make 12 dozen of these because if you don't crimp them right, the, 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 filling, the filling comes out. The filling comes yeah. out and you're left with a limp noodle type thing with <laughs> nothing in it. Yeah. No one likes a limp noodle. Anyway, pierogies, after you boil them and you cook the noodle, um, that's when you throw them in a frying pan with onions and, oh my God, are they so good. They are delicious. I hate you, lawnmower. Guess what I got? What? My son gave it to me. What? It cost me $10 for it, but... What? 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 You're pulling it out of your book He came here. home from work, and I've never seen one in my life. What is... It's a $20 bill, but what about it's it? It's a gold certificate. What the hell is that? Um, this is real money from 1928. This is before the Federal Reserve. Oh, get it. This out. is actually gold-backed. And if you look it up on eBay, I could probably sell it for like eighty to a hundred bucks. So that where did he get it? He got it at work. He works at a fast food place. Right, but I mean, like someone paid with it. Yeah. Oh my god. Somebody had- somebody went to grandma's house and was riff- riffling through stuff and so- stole this. I'm guaranteeing you, oh this was not god. just out in circulation. But you know what though? It could have like I would have seen that. And I wouldn't have thought anything of it. I've seen one dollar silver certificates, and I've seen one five dollar silver certificate in my life. I, I didn't even know a gold certificate existed until he brought that home. Oh, my gosh. I was like, yee really Thank cool. you, son. Thank you. Thank you. And I did call you worthless last week. I meant useless, but Aww, they're interchangeable. That's so much better. Yeah, that's better. You thank know? you. <laughs> you <a> bitch. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Well, I'm really no, you're not. not. I'm you not. are so not sorry. I am so not you're sorry. You're so not sorry. And, um... One of our London-based listeners let us know that they only have two flavors of Pop Tarts, and I didn't even ask which ones, but she said they're both nasty. So, I, I was still this whole week. I was thinking about the Amer- the American food aisle. You you couldn't pay me to eat a Pop Tart. They're just gross. They're, there's like five thousand different flavors. Every holiday has their own flavor. Did you see that they now have pumpkin spice Oreos? Yes. Oh, I just shudder at the thought of yes. Even, you know, no, no just no. plain old double double stuff. Or the mint ones are pretty good. No, 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 no. And um, uh, the other day I was going through the front part of where I work, and it's a bar. Mm -hmm. And I looked up, and there's a bottle of Johnny Walker Black. Yeah. And I was like, well, damn, we carry that. So they must have it mispriced because I asked one of the barmaids when she came in. I'm like, because it's, I mean, it's on the top, top shelf because we've got regular, you know, mid-level, and you got top shelf. Right. and I'm, I'm like, how much is a shot of that Johnny Walker Black up there? And she goes, she looked it up on the computer, four ninety five. So I think it's seriously mispriced. Is that good or bad for a shot? Well, I mean, I don't know. You said I, Johnny Walker Black's like three hundred dollar bottle. No, blue. Oh. No, blue. Black is like second highest. Up. Okay, blue so the highest. I thought the. I don't no, know. blue is like. Oh, we don't have blue. But I guess black, it's okay, $5 for a shot of black. I don't know. Yeah, black is the second, like, on the, the range of Johnny Walker. Okay. You learn something every, every day. And um, I was riding my son to work the other day, and I mentioned our old car before, and we had a Ford Escape, okay? Uh-huh. And he looks at me giggling, and, you know, well, not giggling, he's 22, but he was laughing, and he goes, you realized we used an escape to escape the cult. <laughs> and I went, oh my God, There's we did. kind of funny about that. We used an escape to escape. to escape. And yeah, we used the escape to escape the state too. So There's a cartoon there. Escape the escape. Yeah. I, I just thought that was that, kind of really funny. In a weird way, that is really funny. Oh my God, I have to what? share this with you. Okay. What? You're digging through your bag. What am I holding? Peanut butter? Okay, can you find a brand name anywhere on the front of there? It just says creamy peanut butter, and that is it. Okay. There is no brand. No nothing. Nothing. Okay. And it's got its nutrition facts right, here. Right, it's labeled, yeah. And it's got its um, ingredients, okay? What is, what is it? Now, it says, processed for the Feeding American Network at the Houston Cannery of the Corporation of the Presiding Bishop of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Salt Lake City, Utah, 84150. What the hell is that? Mormon peanut butter? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Look at Where it. did you get it? <clears throat> My friend is blind, and the food bank brings her stuff. And she doesn't eat a lot of peanut It says not for resale. She didn't sell it. It came from the food bank. Oh she gave it God. to me because... 
she gets she gets peanut butter every month, and you can only have like eight jars of peanut butter before you have no more room. Well, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. That's Mormons, right? I don't know. This is like Mormon peanut butter. I don't know. But oh my god, isn't that hysterical? But uh, I mean. Salt Lake City, Utah, that's Mormons. Okay, the Mormons are helping to feed people. I mean, Well, then, all right. I honestly, I, I was, like, quite impressed. Do you know what I mean? But it says, but it says like, not for resale. That's, like, a weird label. Well, it's not for resale because they're helping to feed they're giving people. It away, they're right? giving it away. Well, good for them, though. That's... So, um, yeah, if, if anybody would like to write them a nice letter, they're Salt Lake City, Utah, 84150. <laughs> Um, questions or comments, it's an uh, eight, it's an 800 number. And what is that number? Uh, 8, 1-800-537-5947. Hey. I mean, I, seriously, I really thought this was so cool that there's a religious organization that is, I mean. And Making it's, a, it's pa- packaging food. But it's peanut butter. Who doesn't love peanut butter? Right. And it's highly nutritious. Right. And right. I bet you the bishop blessed it. I've got blessed peanut butter, Laura. From the Mormons. I don't know. Mormon friends. Did you know you guys make peanut butter? <laughs> and you give it away. But that's cool, though. Yeah. Yeah. I brought something else for you. I'm afraid. You're, like, digging in your Mary Poppins bag. Ah! Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. She just, I want you. She just Laura. pulled out the little boxing. Yo, yo. You come man. follow me now. Oh, my God. Oh, my my God. we gotta post I, I gotta post the story of this on instagram of you will you follow stop me it, stop it stop it stop it that looks just <laughs> like a little creepy, man isn't it creepy that is some creepy ass i posted this in the x members group and somebody's like all he needs is his crappy ass glasses the big gold glasses oh they're gold and i keep trying to make i keep trying to remember to fashion some wire ones but i keep you know what i bet if you go to like michael's or like one of those craft stores you could find them you like don't just stop it. Just stop it. Put, put that little creepy ass thing back in your bag. <laughs> I bought it for a dime, Laura. A dime. We're we're posting that on all social media. Did we do that on Facebook yet? I don't think so. I stole it off of the um, ex members page, the picture at one point, because I hid this in but my I mean, house. But did we post that one? I don't think we posted it on Facebook yet. We we'll posted it again. With the I posted a picture on Facebook that I actually, because I hid it and I couldn't remember. My house is so packed with shit. I couldn't remember where I hid it. And I, VCRs, boxing puppets. Let's just say there's a path through my dining room. Well, I have room to talk. Come on. Uh, anyway, yeah, my mother called me a hoarder the one day. I thought you were going to say she called you a whore. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, oh my God. <laughs> <coughs> Um, when we're done today, remind me to to tell you something even funnier, okay? I, I can't tell it on the air. <laughs> anyway, your mom called you a hoarder. And not a whore, it? a hoarder. I, a hoarder. <laughs> and I mean, was that it? I'm not a hoarder. I am an eccentric. Collector. I am an eccentric, eclectic collector, collector. of many things. That oh. is what I am. Okay. Yes. There's very little that's garbage in my house. I mean, it just is waiting for its home a new home a new home um my son actually says that um when i die he's just gonna put a match to it all rather than go through everything <laughs> or no don't put a match to it have one of those um what the hell is the state people come through and sell it oh those are state people they're ripoffs no they they did a good job for my dad's house they're ripoffs Yes, they are. You know why? Why? Because um, I guarantee you the first dozen people in line are people that they know, and they have lists of what they're getting for you. Well, but but here's the thing. You can either try to get rid of all that shit by yourself, which is a pain in the ass. No, it's not. Or you can hire someone. No. What world are you living in? You just said, you just got done saying your house is filled with shit. Yeah, because it's all worth money. Well, then go get money. I got Bridget in the buff the hell's that um bridget and the buff if you look it up on on um google um god it was like i guess back in the 60s like a doll no it's a it's a woman and she's naked and i think she's about for god's sake what she's about 400 in your house she's about 400 pounds and it's a please don't tell me it's a blow-up doll it's a 300 piece puzzle oh 
We actually sat around for a couple weekends drinking beer and putting Bridget and you the Buffs together. Weird, you have some weird ass stuff at your Wait place. Wait till you see this shit at my house. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to we're gonna have to post that. Bridget and the Buff? No, just a bunch of your, your crazy shit that you have. Oh, I can do that. You wouldn't believe half the crap I got. Oh, I'm sure I wouldn't. Um, my my sister, she says that when she comes to my house, it makes her head hurt because there's so much to look at that sh- her eyes don't stop moving because she can't stop looking. And no matter how much you look, there's always more to it's see. It's like seizure inducing. It's, there's always more to see and there's always more that she never noticed before. And yeah, it's pretty much seizure oh inducing. My God. I just look, it is a half hour. We still have not even gotten to the topic yet. We've just been like blabbering. We do that often. I <laughs> like off on so many tangents. A Mormon peanut butter. Come on. Oh my god. Oh, and by the way, happy Star Wars Day. That was October third. Oh, hey, thanks. We were driving. I took my son to work. Sorry, guys, off topic. Um, and the music was low, and all of a sudden he goes, "Is that the Star Wars theme?" And I'm like, "I don't know." And I turned it off. On the radio. On the radio, it was da da, yeah. and it's actually a really cute musical classical musical piece right. that they wrote but jesse's like is this a remix it sounds like it's some funky disco oh, remix don't tell me if you actually listen to the whole thing well it was 1977 of course it's it was right. disco right and after the i'm like i don't know it probably is a remix a funky disco remix and um the dj came on and said no that it was yeah it was it was the original Oh, and wow. you can hear C-3PO in there. You can hear R2-D2. Um, the little Wookiees, you can hear them you know what? in the back. My friend's husband is friends with the guy that played C-3PO. Nice. All right. Just a little, little fact there that's pretty cool. And I, I uh, posted a picture of the new baptism that you couldn't... I posted that too. Yeah, with the like the you said the PVC pipes. Everybody's pretty much um, in... The ex-members are pretty much saying that... It looks to be like the old place they used to baptize people, so I don't know. So it's just like a new contraption put uh, Well, they put the big bathtub in on the stage, okay? So I don't know. Maybe they do that during a feast when there's a mass amount oh, of people. Who could knows? Be. Who that would make sense. the hell knows? So, anyway. All right, we moving on to I don't know. the topic. Oh, I found my old meat grinder the hell does that have to do with anything because in the call it got to be where you couldn't buy ground meat anymore because it wasn't guaranteed that there was no pork in it so you had to actually buy meat and grind it by hand oh what a pain in the ass yeah i got my meat grinder why the hell i packed that i have no idea yeah same reason you packed all your other crap i don't know I, and well hell i'm glad you did or we would have nothing to go through well i'm gonna take a picture of that later so cool Yeah. What do you got for us? We are talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. Which was last week. That was our very first feast that we went to. That you went to. Okay. Look, here's my very first ID. Oh, get out. Look how young I was. Look at you. Oh, my God. Is that a head covering thing? Yep, that's a head covering. Look at you. And look, I still spelled my name Deborah, D E B O R A H. Oh, well, we can scratch some of that out and post it, right? Well, hell yeah. Okay. And, and then, then what's here's, that one? Here's my final one that I had from <gasps> um, Tabernacles 2002. Oh, my gosh. We have to post that one too. Look at you. Because I never went to another feast. I went to services in 2003. But you look so happy in that picture. You don't look like the life sucked out of you. Well, I mean, you, you learn to fake it well. I mean, come on. That's like Oscar award winning right there. Yeah, look at that. I had bangs. <laughs> bangs. <laughs> um, but yeah, Passover was... Um, Tabernacles, I'm sorry. Tabernacles, Tabernacles was our very first feast. And like I said, it was really welcoming and everybody was happy. Well, we were joyous. Oh, because you couldn't be happy. No, you can't be happy. So it says that Tabernacles... Begins on the 15th day of the seventh moon, which is a holy convocation. Yep. Whatever the heck that well, you means. Remember um, the Green Ears of Barley episode? Yeah. Well, in the springtime is when you go to spot the Green Ears of Barley on Mount Zion. Right. And you see the new moon. Okay. Right. And that like dictates the rest of the year. That or something. dictates the calendar for the rest of the year. Right. And you a- actually have to spot the crescent piece of the new moon to set the feast days. Right. 
So, yeah. Okay. Then it says <coughs> that you dwell in booths for seven days. Did you actually make booths? Um, they had like some picnic tables that had um, the four posts going up to make it look like kind of booth like. Yeah, they that's what they had when we first got there. And then they would tie uh, all these long pieces of palm fronds and grass to make it look festive over them. And okay. Yeah. Then it says the eighth day is the last great day. That's when the babies get blessed and marriages happen and betrothals. And, oh, and that's when people is, make deacons and deaconesses and elders. Okay, which is a holy convocation. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a holy, ends, holy day. It says it ends the sacred year. Yep. That's New so, Year's. Oh, oh, really? Basically. Basically. And that's like you said, everyone gets married and... Well, the, any feast, the last great day is um, when you stand up and you get betrothed or you get married. Um, I posted a picture with the tallits and the zit seats, and um, it was me and my son up on stage and it was the blessing of the children on the last great day. Oh, okay. Wait, there's a picture here. Look at this dinky little booth. With a picnic table in the middle. That's the one I was talking about. Get out! Yeah. That's a booth. That qualifies as a booth. That qualifies. <laughs> we got to post a picture of this. Because this literally is four, like, sticks of wood. It is. Around the picnic table. The four, the four corners, and then they, they, they got the four going around the sides, and they have it tied on there. Yeah. Oh, my God. And oh, I'll, you know what? I'll also post a picture of um, me at my very first feast. I don't have any idea who snapped it, but I'm driving by in Kenny's old red truck, uh -huh. and I'm hanging out the window waving, and you can see this exact picnic table oh, in the, get out. behind nice. me. Yes. Nice. Yes. Do you know where that picture is? Yeah. Okay, cool. I just ha really had no reason to ever to post, post it. it. Well, now you do. It's just me waving hi. <laughs> It says that the booths are called, I don't know how to pronounce this, sukas? Sukas. Sukas? Is it suka? Suka. Okay. So it says, how do we make sukas or booths? We make them with willows of the brook or palm branches or any leafy branch. See? Then we hang fruit like pomegranates from them. <gasps> I forgot about pomegranates. I had never had a pomegranate. Why? But why pomegranates? What's the big significance? Like, why would you need a pomegranate? Because it's in the Bible to use pomegranates. Really? Well, of course. Okay. God said so, Laura. I just don't remember pomegranates. But that's the first time I ever had a pomegranate, and they are so freaking good. They're, like, weird. They're, they're just weird. Like, a lot of the seeds. Well, you have to spit those out. Yeah, but it's just a weird fruit, man. Anyway. Anyway. Talk loud, cover up, uh, Pippi. That's right. But then it says, after about the pomegranates, it says, The cult feeds us with the food of the spirit and the 613 laws. Okay. So all that booth making, suka making pomegranates. I forgot they called them that. Yeah. I really did. And I think Kenny put uh, palm fronds and stuff like that on our deck so that we had our own oh, suka thing. Booth. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Do you have any pictures of that? Um, of our feast trailer? No, I, I don't. Unless an ex-member has. Because, see, like, I would take pictures off the deck. Like the children's party picture I took. Right. I'm standing on the deck taking a picture of the party going on. Why okay. would I be taking a picture, picture of, of, uh, of the trailer? That you know what sense. I mean? Okay. So then after talking about, you know, the tabernacles, this is in the kids' book again. Correct. Um, there's an activity here uh, for kids to draw. Where do you stay during the feast? Draw a picture of yourself eating under a suka. <laughs> <laughs> then this is my favorite one. Tell me this isn't creepy. Draw a picture of yourself listening to a sermon. Like, why is that in a kid's book? Because they want you to submit and obey, and this is normal. That is just so bizarre. It's like, you know, do this, do that. Oh, oh, and by the way, draw a picture of yourself listening to a sermon. What are you going to do? Draw the crowd in front of you, a bunch of little heads, and little, man, I mean. little man up there holding up That's his hand? That's what I'm hands. saying. Like, how... <sighs> Laura, at one, po at one point... Don't they, look at me like that. At one point, they put carrots up there, wooden carrots on For the podium. What? I forget what their reasoning was. Wo wooden carrots? They were wooden carrots hanging off the podium. And they were supposed to represent something, and I forget what it was, but, in the ba it, but everything's not what it seems out there, okay? Right. 
the little man used to laugh that they were that he was um, in a wagon. And you dangle the carrots in front of the donkey, and the donkey right. will start walking. Right. But we were told the carrots meant something else. So, I don't know. Pretty phallic right there. Uh, I'm sure it had something to do with that. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I got a lot of pictures that people have sent Hey, if me. any ex-members know what the wooden carrots were. Yeah, the wooden carrots. What the hell? Oh, oh, okay. Right. Remember, remember, we um, mentioned uh, uh, the book that was written about him by his ex-wife, Kay. Yes. Okay. Um, I I was talking to well, when I say talking, you know, like texting. Right. Okay. Um, they listen to us now, like I said last right. episode, and. <laughs> Excuse me. Dee Dee got back to me and says, before I forget, her book sales are low, but she was excited that they went from $7 to $17. So thank you. Good night. <laughs> so yeah, you go, Kay. Look, we're boosting somebody's sales. All right. Yes. And um, if you guys are on Facebook, you know, help each other out with, you know, who who Little Man is and where to find the book and all that good crapola. You know what I mean? Because we just can't come out and say it. No, we just can't come out and say it. Can't come out and say it. So, is that all you got in the children's That's book? That's all that was in there in the children's book. Draw a picture of yourself listening to a sermon. Draw a picture of yourself listening to a sermon. That's just not right. Mm Mm-mm. Oh, another ex-member who was a teenager when I was there. Okay? Okay. Um, He thinks it's, I'm quoting him, it's mad hilarious. Go to their website and live stream the sermons. It's like a circus. I put it on at work all the time and fall right asleep like I used to. (laughs) My boss is like, what the fuck, mate? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, another ex-member, Ashley, chimed in and she goes, it really is like a damn circus. I can't figure out what the hell is going on. They have like 17 kid speakers introduce 11 different groups of whoever. I'm just like, what the actual fuck is going on? Um, what? So... So there's, like, kids introducing this, like, whole bunch of other people talking about... And this is all before Little Man Talks? Yeah. And then... Oh, um, good Lord. Uh, uh, another person answered um, Ashley and said, They are winging it at this point, and as long as people keep falling for it, their tactics and antics will probably get even more outlandish. It's like when your kid tests the limit of what you can bear before you just snap on them. So it sounds like they're just grasping at straws right now. They have no idea what they're doing out there. According to, like I said, a a lot of us ex-members, we get together in the ex-members because it's safe for us to talk there. Right. And we can say whatever the hell we want and there's no repercussions. Uh, Everybody there understands each other because we all live through it, you know. And yeah, apparently they're just winging it. Wow. I wonder yeah. what they're going to be doing when Little Man kicks it. How they're going to wing it then. I, like I said, his, his we always assumed that there would be a, a skirmish between certain top elders. But apparently that's not what's going to happen. His, mm. his, his boy seeds are going to take it over. Oh, good Lord. Now, do you, I, I'm sure I asked you this before, but do you think when Little Man finally kicks it, it'll be in the news? I honestly don't know. I, I doubt it. I mean, he's not that, that well known. You know what I mean? Right. So, I, I don't know. Um, what else what you got? I was just going to say, what else do you have? What else do I have? Yeah. Oh, um, we, we, we have a song dedication today. Oh, do we? We do. For, for the bitch I love to hate. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, wait, do we have a Kenny's Corner? I don't know. No, okay. no. I might, sorry, I might, I might, I might, don't ever be sorry to him. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry we're not making fun of you. Well, that too. Well, I'm always making fun of him, but. <laughs> All right, so hey, what's the song dedication? Um, It is by ELO. That's the Electric Light Orchestra for I all of you out there. I thought you said yellow. I'm no. like, who the hell's yellow? E-L-O. Okay. The Electric Light Orchestra. Right. You okay. remember them? Yes. 
You're an evil woman. Oh. E evil woman. Nice. E evil woman. Look at you go. <laughs> I can't sing. <laughs> <clears throat> I was filmed doing karaoke long ago and far, far away. And my mother actually like got a hold of a copy of the VHS oh, tape. No. And I had no idea she watched it. And this was God 30 years ago. And, um, she's like, so what did you do with the money? And I'm like, what? She goes, what did you do with the money? And I'm like, Have what no money? I yeah. I'm like, what money? And she goes, the money I gave you for the singing lesson. She goes, you couldn't carry a tune in two dump trucks. Oh my God. And, and I, I I was singing Yellow Submarine, and it oh, was just all God. flat, monotone, and you could tell I was hammered. So Really? Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I got nothing else. Nothing. Did you take the book to work with you? I did. No way. I actually did. Did you have to hide it? No. No? No. No. Um, we got a lot of... Um, pictures sent to me this week that I'll be posting. Oh, good. Show, yeah. And um, remember we toasted Marie's daughter and son? Yes, they were getting married. You were not invited. Right, 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 right. Um, well, Marie is officially fired as our assistant. Okay, why? Um, not only were we not invited to the reception, she did not bring us any leftover cake. Oh, that's grounds for being fired. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And there's always leftover cake at a wedding. Absolutely. And then she tried to make amends, and she brought over cookies. Because, you know, Pittsburgh oh, is the cookie that. table. Nope, 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 nope. Well, she brought me snickerdoodles and peanut butter cup. But peanut cake butter with icing, though. Wedding cake, Wedding man. cake with icing. The only thing better than birthday cake is wedding cake. Listen to that lawnmower. I, I, it's I, like, I think they're cutting my grass. Why would they be cutting your grass? Because it needs cut. Oh. Well, it's Sunday. So? Uh, so buttons on your underwear. No, but I mean, like, 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 what? People can't cut grass on Sundays? It's the day of the Lord, Laura. They're supposed to be resting. What? The neighborhood kid needs money. Okay. Well, it's it, you can't work on the Sabbath. Well, she does. How do you know it's a girl? Because <laughs> I know. Because the brother went away to college, and his sister's cutting the grass. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. I'm just glad she decided to pick right now when we're recording. Oh, yeah, and Pippi in the background, <laughs> barking. Sorry, guys. Hey, it's always a shit show. You never know what you're going to get. No, you don't. But, but you know what? We need to seriously get your mom on here. You say that every week. I know I do, but we really do. I have questions. We I, need I a mean, lot of things. I know that. But your mom, like, actually is a doable one that we can get her on here. My mom's doable to you. You know what? I mean. <laughs> no, but I mean, a lot of things are like are just like way out there. This we can actually do. Yeah, we're we're still. At least we're trying. Yeah, but I have the questions already. I have a whole list of things in my book that we're supposed to accomplish, and the list just keeps getting longer, and none of the stuff keeps getting no, crossed I out. Know. I know. You know, I just hope we're not the only ones like. Where, like, you mean to do stuff and it just doesn't happen. There's not enough hours in the day. Oh, my God. My eyes opened at quarter after nine. I went to go have breakfast with my grandma. She didn't want to have breakfast. I said, we just went shopping and bullshitted for a while. And then I grabbed Brother Bob and we made a run for the border to get gas, <laughs> cigarettes, beer, and milk. Okay. Oh, dear God. <laughs> yeah. Um, so everything's cheaper there. Okay. And I was out of everything. I mean, come on. So, and then I had to make it here by by one thirty, but I didn't get here till 2. And now i got to get ready and go to work. And I closed tonight. Oh. But you got a raise. I did, but we're not going to talk about that because okay. I don't know if any of my coworkers listen. Well, and I'm sure at some point they might. Oh. And I don't like to talk about with coworkers what you make. Oh, yeah, okay. So, But, yeah, guys, I got a raise because um, my boss knows I do. You kick I do ass. really good work, and I kick ass. You kick ass. I do, and it was a pleasant surprise. Nice. It's always nice when somebody appreciates the work that you do. Yes, make. it is. So, Even if it's just them saying it to you, it's still nice. I like money better. But, it's, but still, seriously, it's nice if someone, because a lot of times people just will bitch that you're not doing a good job. You know, but like you very rarely have someone say to you that you're doing a good oh, job. Oh, the one guy that I work with, I love working with him. And I said something to him about, um, hey, you need anything done, I'm getting ready to leave. And he's like, 
did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do this? And I looked at him with just the stupid look on, on my face. And he goes, oh, yeah, it's you. I, of course it's of all course done. Of course it's done. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. So he works the early shift today, and we'll overlap, and I'll end up closing tonight. So Nice. Yeah. But then you get some of these dumbasses in there, and they don't do their closing work right. They, nothing. You know what I mean? We have those people at every job. Yeah, and, you know, we got every... I'm the oldest one there, but, yeah. It really sucks when you look around and realize some of your coworkers are, like, younger than your you're youngest to, kid. You're old enough to be their mom? A few of them call me mom. So, yeah. Yeah, trust me. I look around and I'm like, you know what? I could be, like, mom to, like, over half these people. Exactly. Yeah. When did this happen? I don't know, when did, man, does it suck. When did time strap a rocket to my ass? <laughs> <laughs> Laura, life is like a roll of toilet paper. The closer you get to the end, the faster it just seems to go. Oh, damn. Seriously. But it sucks. It's seriously. Like, I'll look around, and I'm like, or else you'll hear them talking about something. Yeah. And you're like, what in the hell are they talking about? Um, some of them, they were talking about their childhood cartoons the other day. And my kids had already outgrown cartoons by that time. So mm -hmm. I don't even know what they're referring to. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, my kids were born um, 96 and 99. So we, we had SpongeBob, we had Cat Dog, we yep. had, you know, Dexter, all that stuff. And now they got really weird. Weird crap. Weird. But even like music or just stuff that there's, I'm just like, I am so too, I'm just really too old for this. Oh, Laura. It, it, it's a proud parent moment when you're driving down the road and. A Led Zeppelin song comes on, your kid turns up the music, and you're both singing at the top of your lungs. Oh, a proud parent moment? My daughter actually wants to go see the Queen movie. No way. Yes. Yes. I was just like, I had a little tear in my eye, and I was like, I did something right. She wants to go see Bohemian Rhapsody. You did something right. I did something right. And guess what? You know what? We were driving to work the other morning, and a Metallica song came on. And did you guys start headbanging? Jesse, Jesse turned it up and we belted it out and headbanged on until it was over. And then I looked at him and I went, oh my God, Jesse, I can afford Metallica tickets. Do you want to go with me? And he went, hell yeah. He says, you're buying, I'm going. So we, I have a really... Yay for you. Yeah, because you're a wuss and won't go. I'm not going to go. No, nobody would go with me. I looked, I asked my mom if she'd go with us and she just kind of giggled and... Exactly. Yeah, no, I don't no, think so. No, but I'm glad, no, I'm glad for you. I'm glad you're going. But my son's going to see my one of my That's favorite awesome. band, and he knows like all of the words to all the songs too. That's awesome. And yeah, it's just really cool when your kid likes your music, you know. I know. So, and all right. I well, don't since know. we haven't even talked about cult stuff for the past twenty minutes, haven't we? I don't even know. We're just like going off on tangents, and we have to prepare better next week. Shit. There is no preparing better, is there? There, There is none with the way our schedules are. There is none. But is, seriously, I am seriously going to work on getting your mom here. Okay. I, that is one thing I am going to do because I do have the questions done. I actually did those. Okay, well then you have to email them to her. I will do that. Yes. Give me her address and I will email the questions to her. And that is one thing I am going to work on. Okay. And you have to come up with questions for um, um, something else. I, I that I'm not going to say on the air okay. what I'm doing, but you got to come. You okay. got to come up with the interview for that too. So. Oh, cool! Because that I can do. Um, there's four or five people that you'll basically be asking them the same question. Oh, okay. So, and I got to get that sent out to people in order to organize for nice. that episode of the nice. show. Nice. So, okay. Well, guys, as always, we try to inform and stay on topic, but we just can't seem to get our shit together nope. sometimes. Sorry again. Oh, geez. Sometimes. Most of the time. Sorry again about the dog and the grass being cut and... And whatever else. Whatever else that, went that we've wrong. Done that. Hey, at least we don't get notifications anymore. We remember to shut our phones off. That's right. I'm not knocking into the microphone. You're, you're giggling <sighs> the, the right way and not into the echo box and... Oh, it's time to go, Deb. I know. I got to get ready for work anyway. So. All right. So on that note, what are you doing? Get that. Don't I put that. You. No, no. Get that I thing out of here. You. Get that creepy ass thing out of here. <laughs> on that note, I'm Laura. And this is Deb. And it was another episode oh, of. Oh, my God. I got, got the hell out. Bye. <laughs>